Hey second graders, it's Miss Barnett. Today we're going to learn about two different types of figurative language. The first one is called onomatopoeia. It's a big word, but it represents really cool figurative language. This explains the sound of an object. Splat. Splat is the sound of water hitting the ground. Or maybe your slime. Splat. That sound is an onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the big word to represent that sound. A word that imitates the sound it represents, like splash, pop, bang. Even the sounds of different cars, vroom, vroom, beep, beep, or a train, chugga, 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 choo, choo. All of those are different sounds. And a sound is an onomatopoeia. Even on your cereal boxes, you might notice that there are onomatopoeias, like snap, crackle, and pop. Snap, crackle, and pop. All of those are onomatopoeias. They are sounds that the cereal makes when milk is added. So those sounds are onomatopoeia. So yeah, it's a big complicated word, but you guys are all really smart, so I know that you can handle it. Now the next type of figurative language that we're going to be learning about is called personification. Personification, you might notice that there's the word person hidden in the word. Because personification is figurative language that gives human qualities to animals or objects. If you take a look at this comic strip here, you'll see that Snoopy is dancing. And he's walking on two feet. And he's wearing human clothes. Snoopy is acting like a person. That is personification. Personification is just giving human qualities to animals or objects. So in this picture, we showed personification by a picture. Now we're going to show personification with a sentence. The stars winked at me. This doesn't mean that the stars have eyes. What it means is that the stars are flickering in the night sky. They're shining and flickering. The stars winked at me. So you can understand that because they don't have any eyes, it's just personification. It's giving a human quality to an object. Now, I love personification because I love cartoons. And a lot of the different cartoons that I like have personification. Like Mickey Mouse. I'm personification because I am acting like a human and I am just a mouse. Me too, Minnie Mouse. I am acting like a person, but I'm just a little mouse. <laughs> Both of those are personification. It's giving human qualities to mice. <laughs> yep, you too, Donald Duck. It's giving a human quality to a duck. Ducks don't talk. All of those are personification. Any kind of thing that is giving human qualities to animals or objects. SpongeBob is a sponge. He should not talk or walk or work at the Krabby Patty. He should, or Krusty Krab, he shouldn't be doing that. But it's personification, so it's allowed. Uh, Pokemon, all of the Pokemon characters. It's giving human qualities to animals. So, all of these, and even objects, because Pokeballs have kind of, you know, a life of their own. All of those are personification. And I'm sure in your mind right now, you're thinking of a whole bunch of different ways that, um, a whole bunch of different examples of personification. Okay, so I'm going to read a poem to you now. And it has both onomatopoeia and personification. And that's why I'm reading it. It's called Eight Balloons, and it's by Shel Silverstein. Bring eight balloons to life. And if you would like to when you're at home, it says choose eight friends, which maybe you don't have at home, but maybe you could do it with your uh, family members to perform a short play. You can be the narrator, the one who begins and directs the play. Each one says and acts what happens to each of the eight balloons, all joined together to pop at the end. So you can try to do that at home if you would like. But I will read the poem to you. Eight balloons. Eight balloons no one was buying. All broke loose one afternoon. 
Eight balloons with strings of flying, free to do what they wanted to do. One flew up to touch the sun. Pop! One thought highways might be fun. Pop! One took a nap in a cactus pile. Pop! One stayed to play with a careless child. Pop! One tried to taste some frying bake some bacon frying. Pop! One fell in love with a porcupine. Pop! One looked close in a crocodile's mouth. Pop! One sat around till his air ran out. Whoosh! Eight balloons no one was buying. They broke loose and away they flew. Free to float and free to fly. All free to pop where they wanted to. So this has both onomatopoeia and figurative language. Every time that it says pop, that's an onomatopoeia. It's the sound of the balloon popping. And whoosh is the sound of the air running out of the balloon. And then it says, bring eight balloons to life. So bringing them, the balloons to life, giving human qualities to them, is personification. One flew up to touch the sun. One thought highways might be fun. I don't think balloons think. I know they don't think. That's personification. One took a nap. Balloons don't nap. That's what humans do. That's personification. One stayed to play with a careless child. Each one of these are personification. Each sentence is a different example of personification. And the ending of each sentence is onomatopoeia. So this is a great example. This one is my favorite. One tried to taste some bacon frying. Pop! Of course a balloon can't taste. And we have the sound of the pop. So I hope that this makes a little more sense about what onomatopoeia and personification mean. And I hope you also had fun reading this poem. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.